to this community newspaper Facebook program, Excellence in Education. This is Marta Perez, and our mission is to expose and inspire excellence in education. Follow us on Facebook and send questions to our chat room. Today, we are so fortunate to have another legendary example of excellence at her craft, who serves as such an inspiration to all our theater and artistic students. She is the very talented star, Dee Dee Khan. And luckily you can see her tonight and all the way through December 12th at Actors Playhouse in Coral Gables, starring with three other legends in a great play that is new to South Florida called Middletown. And what a way to treat yourself when you go because Miss Khan is the headliner of the show, such an experienced, talented star, and who is of the highest magnitude. Oh, my goodness. She is equally <laughs> versatile as a comedian and as a dramatic actress. Many of us remember her impactful role as Frenchie, the, uh, the character on the, uh, the movie Grease. And she has also such a large resume. I can't go into it. Countless movie credits, Broadway, uh, TV shows, on and on, an artistic career that uh, has spanned many years. And not only that, but she also has a very kind heart and has served as a spokesperson for children with autism. And we have her in our community today through December 12th to enjoy her at Actors Playhouse in Coral Gables. You can get your tickets online and it's the best investment you can make during these holidays because it's so much fun. Guaranteed fun if you go. <laughs> So please um, allow me to welcome this extraordinary talent, extraordinary and remarkable yeah. actress <laughs> who is so talented, Miss Didi Khan. Well, welcome. thank you. Thank you very much. What an introduction. Well, tell us first about yeah. your very interesting background, how you grew up and how you came to this point in your life. Oh my goodness, well, you got a, you got some time here? Yes, okay. we do, yes we do. <laughs> well, well, you know, this is very interesting because it, this, my beginnings really has to do with my fourth grade teacher. Really? Yes, because when I was in school, I was not very you know, academic, you know, I would love to play, I would love to, you know, sports. But um, my fourth grade teacher said, okay, here's your assignment, read a book, but you can do whatever you want. You don't have to write a book report. You can draw a picture if, if you're an artist, you can do a diorama. So I read Pippi Longstocking <laughs> and I wrote a play and I played all the characters. Yeah. Oh, how creative. Yeah. And it was such a success that I had to go around to every classroom and do the play. And oh my, my mom put pipe cleaners in my pigtails, you know, but it was being seen for who I am. And that's what that teacher gave to me. She brought out my natural abilities and that's where school and the kind of teacher you have and the sensitivity right of the interaction Absolutely. between student and teacher is so important mm -hmm. yeah well that's very coincidental because in a different way my fourth grade teacher was very influential too and miss khan was born in brooklyn in, 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 well but i was born in cuba but oh. we were born in in july yeah i'm so older i share, heard this already we share i'm older birth, almost <laughs> share the birthdays and, yeah. and how interesting because my fourth grade teacher was very impactful and it shows the power of a teacher yes. and why there's it's so important to support them and to put the best teachers in front of our students. Absolutely. So you 
were born in in Brooklyn, New York, and um, grew yeah. up there. But, uh, oh, uh, did yeah. you have siblings? I know you have some famous yes, siblings. I have three brothers. Three, uh, you were the only girl. Yes, I am the only. What girl. order? So what line? I have an older brother and two younger brothers. Okay. And my youngest brother is an opera singer with the, with the I mean, Metropolitan Opera. He's been there twenty eight years. Wow. And my other younger brother is the NBA senior photographer. Oh my goodness! And yeah, he wrote a book with Kobe Bryant before oh. um, Kobe oh. passed, and he's a f my brothers are the best. I I'm such a lucky person. I've got three brothers and a husband. <laughs> it's like these four pillars all oh, around. Oh, how me. wonderful for yes. you! How wonderful! And I think you deserve it because I know that you have a very kind heart and and have always been uh, known as a very kind star, very Aww, gracious. Thank you. Yes. thank you. Well, you know, going back to the roots, you know, my mother, had she not had these children when she was beginning, when she was 19, mm -hmm. I think she would have been an actress oh. because she was always directing community theater oh. and using my older brother, ah. you know, so acting theater was always around, you know. Right, and, and you said that uh, you were not necessarily a, a good student, but then yeah. it, you it, it uh, well, opened I, up avenues for you. Well, I was chomping at the bit to get into uh, high school performing arts. All my teachers were, were recommending that, but my parents wanted me to have a regular high school education uh -huh. and that I could pursue that in college. But well, and that's what I did. And luckily, having a regular, you know, sometimes kids are so anxious to get their careers going. Um, when you're, you know, I did two movies back to back where I was a high school student <laughs> when I was in my 20s. So I had that to draw on, on, you know, being going to a regular school. So you went to a, a regular high school? I did. And I went to Brooklyn College for a year and a half and okay. did every course in acting that there was. But um, uh, then I heard about a school called AMDA, American Musical Dramatic Academy. And I'm telling you, I was in heaven from from you know you 10 know, in the morning till 6 at night acting dancing singing speech you know when did you know that this was what you wanted to do that you didn't want to be a nurse yeah you didn't want to be something else when did you know this at what age? oh i think very young i think uh, at fourth grade i mean it it was i was always dancing too and there was a point where i thought you know, and I was being groomed in the Martha Graham School of Dance. I was going to Manhattan to study there. Um, but then one day, my girlfriend, Paula, who used to go with me to the city to go to dance school, decided to stop going. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, she had boyfriends. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, hmm, this is interesting, you know. Uh -huh. But um, I was always acting. And I thought, well, no, I think I'm Maybe I was a dancer in my last life, and this life I'm going to I'm going to act. And uh, I was very very lucky at the beginning of my career. I worked 14 years straight with uh, one wonderful wonderful opportunity after another. And then we got I got married, and we <laughs> were, wanted to have children. And you know sometimes things don't happen exactly the way you plan. Uh, right. We tried for quite we tried everything everything. Well, we won't get into that, but <laughs> but of course, but uh, many, you know, yes. you'd be surprised how many of us um, have had uh, women. I mean, yeah. problems conceiving, and and there 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 are a lot of stories. Absolutely, yes. yes. Well, we ended up adopting, uh -huh. and we have a wonderful, beautiful, incredible sunny boy <laughs> named Daniel, and he's uh, twenty nine now, and uh, yes, he is autistic. And um, I've been fortunate to be part of um, Autism Speaks as a celebrity spokesperson because w when my son was diagnosed, it was like in the dark ages of autism, you know. Now, if someone has this diagnosis, they go right on Autism Speaks and there's every kind of um, doctor and therapy and everything that, that will help you. Yes. to support you to get through to get the best possible um, early intervention. And, and our schools also, you know, we came from being in the dark ages to now having 
programs for yes. our students and, and uh, certainly much more needs to happen because uh, families need the help and the students need the help, but there's so many wonderful success stories. Absolutely. And, and um, so we're very glad that you have such a kind heart and, and have been so instrumental in, in your work with autism. So tell us though about your first job. How did that happen? Was your very first job in acting or did you have like some other little thing part time? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, you know, I, to make some money. Yeah. I, I, I did some secretarial work when I was Where in high school. Where did you do that? In Manhattan. In Manhattan. You yeah. Were uh, a 16, 17 and yeah. you were a secretary? Well, not really a secretary. I was more a delivery of mail <laughs> and decided that, well, you know, it was good to make some extra time. I was so excited. My first paycheck was like $112 wow. and I got it all in singles, you know, it was, <laughs> but yeah. my, um, well, my first professional job actually was in uh, your good man, Charlie Brown. Ah. And I thought I should buy something with this paycheck that, that I'll always remember. So I was still living at home and I decided to buy a lock for my bedroom door. <laughs> <laughs> to keep your brothers out? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and my mother didn't know about this. And one time I was having company, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> and my mother went, what's the matter with this door? Oh. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, um, but interestingly enough, you know, we're doing this play Middletown. And my very first job in Hollywood was on Happy Days. Oh. And I played Donnie Moe's girlfriend, oh. Ralph <laughs> Malf's girlfriend. And in Middletown, I'm now performing with, with him. him. Yes, yeah. a great performance. And oh, yes. my goodness. And I've played both roles. I've played his wife and I've played Adrian Smith's uh, wife. This time I'm playing Adrian Smith. Tell, tell us a little bit about Middletown oh. uh, and, and the concept and was it easy for you it's it's a little bit of a different kind of play well it's interesting because it's a play about relationships and about two couples who have been friends for 33 years and it begins they they have a great rapport with each other they're lots of fun and they're always joking and they're very different each one is very different from the other but they complement each other and they love each other and they support each other and they all see life in a different way which is what makes the play so interesting and um, it's filled with heart and the message is about the way to have a friend is to be one mm -hmm. absolutely a beautiful, a beautiful message. message that we all written by dan clancy who's from florida uh -huh. you know yes and, uh, yes you uh, I was there opening night and it was a wonderful event and a lot of fun. And I hope that our viewers, they have until December 12th oh, to yes. take advantage of this holiday event. And, and this theater is so beautiful. Uh, and it's, yes. it's a big theater. Yes. It was a, a historic movie theater, yes. Art Deco style. Uh, so if people are a little concerned about having to wear a mask, it's you have room to breathe yes. in this theater. Yes, because I think that, that this play could have uh, been uh, played in a smaller theater, mm -hmm. but I think that at Actors, yeah. what they do is they have the, it, it on the main stage so that spread there's more out. spread out. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about uh, right. anything. And yeah. if you go, you have to show your vaccination yes. and uh you have to show also an id yes we're tested every other day and and COVID and, and, and and you wear your masks uh during the performance yeah. but it's very comfortable and and i'm sure you will have a very good time and and get to witness this incredibly talented young lady and let me ask you is there no business like show business <laughs> There's no business. There's no business. Like, oh my goodness. Well, you know, people, young people who um, are the stars of their high school productions and junior high school, they're, you know, have starry eyed about having a career in, in show business. Yes. And you have to have, I feel, I have to have, I feel in my heart that this is my way to express all the love that I have is by merging with a playwright 
and what their dream was for this play and becoming that person to fulfill what the playwright's intention was. That's, that's my, my gift, my, my joy. Was it ever hard for you to get a, a, a part? Oh, of you course. Were disappointed? Of what, course. What? Well, no, but that's the point is that if you don't have that deep, deep feeling that this is the way I express myself, God knows how many times I wished I was an artist, you know, so that I could express myself anytime I wanted in my studio. I could just paint. I could, you know, I could do or if I was a writer, that I could do it on my own time. The problem is with actors, you have to have a job. You have to have a lot of conditions. There's got to be a film. There's got to be a script. There's got to be a television. There's got to be the, the uh, audition process is so difficult because there's some very, uh, you know, not so nice people that you meet and uh, exploitive people. And you have to have a very strong sense of purpose for doing it. If you don't have that, it won't work out because the auditions are so competitive. And, you know, there was a time when I was just getting offered things, which was great. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> but if you're not right on TV right now, it's not that way, you know. And I just did a pilot for a new series, so I'm keeping my fingers oh, crossed. Good. Oh, because series are so popular. Especially if I could be home in New York. This one films in New that Jersey. That would be wonderful for you, yes. yes. Well, that that's just it, you know. I, we have uh, three uh, high schools that are uh, for the performing arts. Three, three. Wow. And, and the talent and the students are incredible and they have plays uh, and, and you see these students and you say, oh my goodness, I hope that they can make it, but I don't know what, uh, and, and of course you can replicate that throughout the United States. Oh, sure, there so, you go. And everyone wants to be a star. And you know, the best that, thing is to go to a college if you can afford it to go to a college and major in theater. Because if you major in theater, you not only take courses in acting, you will take courses in set design, in, mm -hmm. in costume design, in history, in art history. You might find that, yes, you love to be part of the community, maybe not as an actor, maybe you like to be a director, uh -huh. maybe you turns out you're a wonderful writer because somebody need something to be written but, so college gives you all those opportunities to be a part of the theater community or film community but not necessarily be the actor but in fact our high schools and 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 that this is a great credit to our school district uh Ha, you know, in those schools, there is a set design, right. there is directing, there are, there are all those kinds of opportunities already at the high school level. That's great. And sometimes you go and see these students and they're just amazing, but only a small amount are chosen. And, and uh, it is very hard and you hear the heartbreak stories yeah. and the people that go to Hollywood and and become waitresses and waiters and sure. never make it but there's uh, but the, on the brighter brighter side there are so th there are so many acting opportunities and, and so many opportunities in show business right even if you want to act because you have all other like you have the community theaters and um <laughs> there's all kinds of other opportunities it's not just the big brad pitt stars right yeah right <laughs> that, that's well, you know, when um, uh, when Grease came up in Hollywood, I had seen the Broadway show because that had been running at that time a few years. It was at the time it was the longest running musical uh, on Broadway. Uh, and Alan Carr, who's the producer of the movie, he bought the rights for two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> That's might sound like a lot of money, but, but it was nothing. this is nothing compared to what it's it achieved. Is to, you know? Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> but. Um, when uh, I auditioned, I this doesn't happen a lot. I my agent said you have to go in looking like the role, and uh, all I had was that she was an aspiring beautician, <laughs> and I had been in L.A. at that time, maybe three years. So I was driving home in a new way, and what did I see? But Frenchie's beauty parlor. Oh my goodness! 
So I thought, oh, you gotta go there. And sure enough, I went in and this little Frenchie, and she had big hair like this. I said, oh, I didn't tell her I was going for this audition. I said, um, oh, I love the way you did your hair. She must have used like three cans of hairspray to make. I said, can you do that with my hair? And she did. <laughs> and then there's a place called Western Costumes and I got a little 50s outfit and um, went in. But the thing was, they had only given me the name Frenchie. I hadn't gotten my script yet. And I went up to Paramount and there's a guards, there's a gate and there's a booth where the guard is. And he, you tell him your name and he hands you the script. Well, he handed me just this thin envelope. So I opened it up and it just said, men are rats. Worse than that. I said, what? I said, oh. And I saw on his desk, there were thick envelopes. I said, you don't happen to have the whole script of Greece, do you? And he said, pull your car over. And I came around his booth and he gave me a whole script and I had to go under his desk and read it <laughs> because this is something very important. Actors get an impression or young actors might get an impression of a role as a description, but you always want to know what the context is. What is this whole story about, you know? And I hadn't, I had seen it several years prior I'd seen the show but I I didn't really know why she was saying these words and then I saw oh I see what's going on here yeah, you know so anyway then I auditioned and uh, it wasn't over yet they said okay now you have to have a dancing audition oh boy but at this point they were also auditioning dancers and actors that they were considering at that point there may have been 10 or 15 for each of the pink ladies and the t-birds and they were teaching us not the hand job this stroll thing and so here we are a, 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 at least 80 90 people on a sound stage all the powers of b are on bleachers watching us and pat birch is teaching us to do this stroll which is the beginning of the dance contest when you see the movie well for some reason when they go and one two three they're all going this way, and I'm going this way. So what happened? Oh, my goodness. They took a break. I went up to her assistant, who happened to turn out to be the guy who played Putsy in the movie, <laughs> Kelly Ward. I said, what am I counting wrong? Why is everybody going this way? I'm going this way. And he did it again with me, and I did it wrong again. I said, well, that's it. I'm not going to get this, right? Well, I got it. And when we did that <laughs> scene, our choreographer, Pat Birch, came up to me, and she said, okay, Dee Dee. I know you know how to do it now, but you remember what you did at the audition? I said, yeah. yeah. I said, I went this way. Everybody was going this way. She said, do that. <gasps> so when you see the movie now, she didn't want it to be perfect. Oh, my goodness. She wanted That's us to be story. regular high school oh, kids that Leah. are quirky and you know, fun. <laughs> That's a great, a great, great story. My goodness. Well, it just shows you that um you know the talent and be yourself be yourself but but it, but <laughs> and it it certainly worked for you and and and, you. and your amazing career and tell us about some of the challenges that that you have had disappointments maybe jobs that you would have wanted that didn't get uh in your life oh well i mean i think if there is a color you know that goes through the uh, tapestry of my career, you know, it's it's filled with a lot of tears because you you have a certain uh, energy uh, desire to be performing, you know, and when the work isn't coming, it's tough. And also coinciding with uh, wanting to be a mother and that not coming to be as well, I found myself really sinking pretty low, you know, and I decided when I was already like 38, 39 to go back to college because I had never finished and take Shakespeare and poetry and do things that I had never done and speech so I could learn accents and I could, you know, so I think the most important thing is to stay true to, to your dreams, you know, and even when it's tough and it can be years of it being tough that you find a way to either uh, do for others, you know, service, helping, uh, and uh, and also 
uh, just to, to, to keep um, reading and, and going to going to museums, filling yourself up with our uh, and traveling. Me, thank you for, for sharing that because, you know, so many young people think when they look at stars like you, they think, oh, all the heavens opened for them <laughs> and they had all all their dreams answered. And uh, for example, that audition that you described, oh, it was a given and uh, life is, is tough. And we certainly have a lot of great opportunities and, and happy times, but we also have uh, disappointments oh, and sure. and sadness and, as you say, a tapestry with with tears a, oh, as yeah. well. And we got to push through. Push, yes, absolutely. You know, through. sometimes you definitely need good luck in this business. <laughs> yes, it's it's a, it really is true. But it's also if if your purpose of being an actor is to express humanity and feelings of uh, all the, the gamut of human emotion, then what you need to do is continue to give in some way, whether you volunteer and uh, work with uh, seniors or children or uh, just keep giving because, I don't know, that's my my uh, go-to. We, we don't have a lot of time, so I want to get a lot of things in. First of all, <laughs> yeah. Didi, who yeah. is your hero? Oh, who is my hero? Well, you know, if it's just in my own, in my own uh, sphere <laughs> is my husband. Ah, my that's husband, wonderful. David Shire. He is a phenomenal composer. He's won the Academy Award. He wrote the um, theme for Norma Ray, the uh -huh. movie Norma Ray. Yes. And he's written over 200 film scores and television and Broadway musicals. So there's a lot of music in your house? There's, I dreamt of him before I met him. I dreamt that I was dancing in the living room with someone playing the piano. And that's what <gasps> Oh, my goodness. To be. Yeah. That, how did you meet him? Oh, well, a friend of mine was at a benefit, and she was sitting next to him in New York, and she had this feeling about the two of us. And she called me in L.A., and she said, I sat next to this guy, David Shire. Uh, I just have a feeling. I said, wait, stop, Penny. I, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> now, two years ago, and I'm not with that boyfriend anymore, okay. and I'm still in L.A. doing the TV show Benson. Uh -huh. And I'm listening to the radio one night. I was staying with friends because I really didn't want to still be in L.A. So I didn't even have a TV. I was listening to the radio. And this guy, David Shire, was being interviewed. Oh. And they were playing this <laughs> music from uh, Farewell, My Lovely. Uh -huh. And he's talking about how he always had a crush on Charlotte Rampling. <laughs> and and I said, David Shire, oh, that's who Penny was. So I called Penny back. She gave me his number. And then I called him up and I said, hello, David. <laughs> this is Charlotte. I just heard you on the radio. Oh, you are so clever. <laughs> that was so clever. <laughs> he said, who is this? I said, it's, it's Penny's friend, Dee Dee. And I... I that was, asked him he out. Fell, he fell for you right Well, there. he said that it must have taken a lot of courage. You know, this is back, this is 40 years ago, November 2nd. How clever That you are. he was going to go on a charity date with me, you know, because I took so much of me to <laughs> call. It. But I did. I picked him up, took him out. And uh, in fact, I was doing um, that particular week, I was uh, doing Grease 2, which Adrian's Med, who is another one of our co-stars in Middletown, uh, was so terrific. And so, yeah, that was 40 years ago. Wow. All right. What's your favorite meal? Spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> oh, yum, yum, yum. I've tried it everywhere in, in Coral Gables, and everywhere was delicious. Very good. Yes, we have great restaurants in Coral Gables. So I think we're almost out of time. One minute left. Tell us about the play. Tell us uh, why people should come and see you when they have the the this great opportunity in Coral Gables. Well, if you've got a friend or a group of friends that you enjoy being with, that crack each other up, that have just will be there for you no matter what, no matter what the circumstance. If you have friends like that, take them to see this show because this is a. Uh, a play that honors 
love between friends oh. and and how important it is to have good friends in life when you have this they call it the roller coaster ride of life uh -huh. um and my character peg is telling the story of her three darling best people in her life uh -huh. And then they we they become them, uh -huh. and we act out the thirty three years that have passed. So. Excellent! Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank You're you. wonderful, uh, Didi. You are wonderful. I hope that you take this advantage of this great opportunity in Coral Gables at Actors Playhouse and come see this amazing star, great humanitarian, wonderful, beautiful lady. And with that, I close the program, Excellence in Education. Thank you very much. Oh, wow.